in another video we were talking about accommodating people. And so a devotee was asking a question, well, how do we accommodate ourselves? Because we may be in a similar situation where we find that we're trying to follow a certain standard and we can't follow. And we've been trying and trying and trying. It's easier to talk about this if you haven't been initiated, because if you haven't been initiated, you're trying to, to follow a certain standard, but you haven't vowed to follow it. And so, for people who are coming to Krishna consciousness, then we encourage them, do what you can do. And by doing what you can do, gradually you'll want to do more. So it's much better if they want to do it on their own. And Prabhupada said, don't force, educate. And through education, people will be inspired to improve. So it's always better if I am the ultimate one who's pushing myself. If I push someone else, it may be good, it may work, but my experiences, both from being the pusher and being pushed, it doesn't normally last. So in the right environment, you're being pushed, you're being encouraged, you're doing well, but then after a while on your own, you're not doing so well. And that's sometimes why it's confusing to understand what level of Krishna consciousness we're on and what we can maintain, because in a good environment, we're able to do more. If, if we're around senior association, we have a mentor, we're going to a lot of classes, we're being counseled a lot, naturally it's going to be easier. But that's not normally how it is for most of us. For most of us, it really comes down to us inspiring ourselves, understanding ourselves. So we, we have to be a little introspective to understand exactly what we can do and what is a stretch that's going to tear a muscle, so to speak, and what we can maintain. So. Just like when we tell new people, we say, chant a number of rounds you can maintain. So shouldn't we apply that principle to everything? Do something. How do you know you can do it? Because you can maintain it. And then when you maintain it for a while, then you're in a position to increase it and see, can I increase this a little? Can I increase this austerity or do more service or make more time? If it's natural, generally it's going to be sustainable. So this word sustainability is a big word in the ecological world. So sustainability is important in spiritual life. If you do something that's not sustainable, okay, you can do a few days austerity. But if it's not sustainable, then it can have negative repercussions. And so now what happens if you're initiated and you've made vows and you're having trouble following them? Well, naturally, if you can't follow them, there's going to be a lot of guilt and shame. And if there's a lot of guilt and shame, it's, it's such a negative energy that what often happens is it makes it even more difficult to follow. So let's say I'm supposed to chant 16 because I've vowed. And I'm only chanting eight, and I feel very negative, very guilty about it. Sometimes if the guilt reaches a certain point, I may just go down to four or stop chanting because I feel so bad. I feel like, why should I even try? So how do we deal with this issue? Okay, let's say eight, for some reason, eight is all I can do. Now, if I tell this devotee, okay, it's okay to chant eight even though you made a vow, technically that's wrong. I shouldn't say that. But if I force them to, to chant 16 and they can't, it's counterproductive. So if I say chant 8, knowing that's all they can do anyway, and at least maintain that 8 and gradually increase, there's a better chance that in the long run they'll chant 16 than if I say you have to chant 16, this is the standard, you made a vow, that's it. Which is the first line of offense that I would, I would um, engage in with somebody. I would always try to encourage them to come back to their standard. But if I saw it was, it was impossible, they can't do it, then I would encourage them, okay, be okay with what you can do, at least maintain something so you can build on that. And that's how we should talk to ourselves. We should always try to come to the standard and do our best. But if for some reason it's just not possible, even though we've tried our best, we, ex we should accept a standard which we can maintain without beating ourselves up and feeling overly guilty and shameful. Because then you can build on that, and over time, if you maintain eight rounds, there's a good chance you're going to maintain 10 in the future, then 12, and eventually 16, maybe 25, maybe 32, who knows. But if we're overcome by guilt and shame, it may be that the eight will turn to six, turn to four, turn to two, turn to zero, and we've seen that. So although, in a sense, we can't say, I can't tell someone not to chant 16 who's initiated, and I wouldn't, but if they're only chanting 8 and I cannot get them to chant 16, then I would tell them, okay, maintain the 8. Don't go lower and then gradually build upon that. So 
we're going to have to learn to accept our deficiencies. And in some cases, it may not be the number of rounds. It may be regular principles. It may be rising time. It may be service we're not doing that we used to do. Maybe so many things that circumstantially or internally we're not able to maintain. And the only way to work through this, or the only way that I've found it is product, a productive way to work through this, is to accept this is my reality right now. This is the best I can do under these situations and according to the level of my Krishna consciousness. But at least let me maintain that and then build upon that without being overly negative or shamed or feeling too guilty about it. Guilt is good. We should feel guilty about it. But if I feel too guilty, guilty about it, it becomes negative and it works against me. So the ultimate goal is to be Krishna conscious. And so we have to see it in, in the effects of long term. And so how we understand um, we should deal with ourself, maybe you could call it more self-compassionate ways, the way we should help other devotees. So it's a balance of, of strictness, pushing ourselves, as well as self-compassion for accepting, well, this is the best I can do. I wish I were different. I wish I were better, but I'm not. But that's a very healthy psychology. Now, someone may say, no, it's not healthy because you made the vow. I understand that. In the spiritual sense, it's not healthy. But if you can't do it, it's unhealthy. Whether I tell you and scream at you and jump up and down and try to force you, if you can't do it, yes, it is unhealthy for you. But psychologically, it's unhealthy to be bathing in shame and guilt if you can't do something. But it's more psychologically healthy to be accepting. This is where I'm at right now. This is what I can do. And then uh, build upon that. So through self-acceptance of your faults, not accepting that this is good or right, but accepting that this is where I'm at right now, this is the best I can do, then you're in the best position to move forward.